posterizing footage is a way of changing the way the footage plays back. So when you play footage back, it plays back at the original frame rate it was created. So for example, this piece of footage from Adobe of a man running and jumping with explosions going around, that was at 24 frames per second, so it's playing back at 24 frames per second. If you're never sure what it is, you can always go to the bin and you can look at the actual settings. If you go to the list view, you can go in and you can see the settings for the original footage. You can see the frame rate that it's using. So you can see it's 23.976, near enough 24 frames per second. So we know that's the frame rate that this originally was created at. However, if we change the frame rate, we can change the feel of what's going on. And we can also perhaps change it to such an extent where it becomes almost a sample of itself, which can be visually quite effective. So what do I mean by this? Let's actually apply the posterize effect. If you don't know where effects are, if you go to the effects tab down here and you start typing post, P-O-S-T, you'll see that you've got two options. One says stylize, posterize, which is not the same thing. That's how it looks. What we're looking for is time, posterize time, okay, because we're playing with time. So if you take the time, posterize time effect, and drop it on the clip, or with the clip selected, you could have double clicked you'll see that it applies it to the effects controls and at the moment it says the frame rate is 24 frames per second so in other words it's going to play back as it was originally created now sometimes you want footage to look like it was shot on a camera in olden days which used a different frame rate so you might change the frame rate to a lower frame rate to make it look slightly different so let's say change it down to say 18 frames per second and so when you play back you're going to see it's going to look slightly different Now that's not hugely noticeable, so maybe we'll take it down to half speed. So it's, it was 24, take it down to 12 frames per second, hit home and play. You can see it's starting to look a bit jolty and a bit different. So maybe we can take it even lower. Let's try 6 frames per second. Come back and try 6 frames per second. You can see that's definitely giving us that sort of posterized effect. We're not really getting everything that's going on. And it's beginning to look slightly weird and we're getting some artifacting coming on. But one of the great effects you can have is if you're having a fight scene and somebody needs to review what's gone on in their memory, if you take it down to one frame per second and you hit play, you almost get a snapshot of something that's going through. So if I play, you'll see we've got a snapshot of what's happening. And with some dramatic music, you're telling a story just with one frame per second. So posterizing time gives us the ability to change the frame rate. It's usually more effective the lower the figure you have. If you change it just slightly, you're not really going to notice a great deal. But if you take it right down to low values, say, so let's try four a second and hit play, you're really going to get a sense of something happening almost in stop motion, but yet it's real life action. And as you saw before, if you take it down to one frame per second, then you've really got something that looks like playing something back almost at stop motion, and yet it's real action happening to give a really effective time-lapse feel. Now, the other thing you can do with this frame rate, of course, is you can take it down to zero. If you take it down to zero, and then you're stuck at the first frame that was created. So have a play with posterized time. Taking it to higher frame rates isn't going to affect anything. You're not really going to see anything when you take it to a higher frame rate. It's when you go to the lower frame rates that you're really going to have the most effect.